What, what does it feel like to be a politician for so many years now? If you think politics is just to hold office, I don't think I would have continued. A very busy politician, senior government minister. I look for the day when I could get out of it. What of your childhood do you miss today? Sit down in a boutique or a village house, enjoy a kurumba. As a little kid, did you understand what this was all about? We were all told that May Day is now a holiday. Dinesh Gunabardhanan is our guest today on the show. Good evening, friends, and a warm welcome to our program. We have a VIP guest today, the Chief Government Whip, Honorable Dinesh Gunabardhanam. is our guest today on the show. Good evening, welcome to the program, Mr. Kuntavardhana. Good evening, Kumar. Uh, now, you are no stranger to politics. You were immersed in politics from your birth, from your fetal stage, I should think, and uh, you just swam in politics. Uh, what does it feel like to be a politician for so many years now? Yeah, in a way, mm, some are born into politics, but some do not continue in politics. Yes. So it's a big challenge, I think, for anyone to continue in politics because politics is to serve one's country and one's people. And uh, one has not only to serve, one has to be creative, one has to understand. So it's, a, it's like a never-ending horizon when you work with people, searching for new things, getting their ideas, uh, trying to create something new where people can advance. I think whole uh, uh, society, civilization is that. Uh, if, you ex if you think politics is just to hold office, I don't think I would have continued for such a long time because the negative side of politics uh, eats on you a lot. Okay. Now, we, we go back so many years when you actually held your father's hand and walked in the May Day procession in the 1956-59 era. Uh, what was that experience like as a little boy, a, a little royalist? A little royalist, yeah. I think um, royal primary, mm. boy of royal primary to walk with my father. Um, Did school give permission? I never asked for permission. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think at that time one should seek permission because every, everyone had the right to do all these um, things, participate in different activities. So on May 1st, we used to hold on to our father's uh, hand and walk down with the workers of, um, especially the port workers, coming down, uh, listening to all these slogans, enjoying the slogans, going through uh, various forms of, you know, expression. Uh, some also dance the songs, in the happiness, dance, yes. songs, no, you and slogans. That, sorry, slogans. So, all this was uh, for a small kid. Something interesting. In when we grow, we were wondering what this all, what this is all about. Not only walking with our father, but trying to understand what all this was relates to politics, it relates to government, it relates to day-to-day -to -day activity, expression of their problems. Uh, so May Day has been contributing immensely to our um, thinking, I feel. As a little kid, did you understand what this was all about when you walked with the father in the May Day procession with the music and the singing and the slogans? Did you, did it really, I mean, did you as a child understand what this is really all about? Perhaps not uh, the first uh, the first two years, but later on, reading through, uh, 
one could understand something to do with the working people, something to do annually of a right one, because it, 57, I think, uh, May Day was declared a public holiday. So it became more effective, no school. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all told that May Day is now a holiday. Yeah. Uh, and it had its uh, uh, effect in our whole process of understanding uh, what May Day was. But in school, we st had uh, in literature some a little different uh, May Day was being explained. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, in the history, in the literature, um, we, uh, you know, dancing round the pole. Round the Maypole. Yes. Maypole. Yes, yes. So that was long after I had joined the May Day procession. So May Day was uh, very much, um, uh, in a way, educative, I would say, for me. Because as I grew, participated in class, history, um, civics, uh, various things that were being said at May Day, slogans, did relate um, foreign affairs and uh, relationship with countries. Because though we were small kids, to read the newspaper, we see so and so meeting so and so, at least the headlines we could read, mm -hmm. though we did not understand the detailed articles. So May Day was an experience of itself. At which point of your life did you know that you would not be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, accountant, but that you would really be a politician and take to politics? At, at, at how old were you when that happened in your mind? Very difficult to say because uh, I was at Royal and I continued my education there, participating in various activities, college activities, our village activities, etc., and with my brothers, sister, the whole family, everyone was in politics, uncles, okay, yes. uh, cousins. So I used to t um, see them uh, in different uh, activity of politics, not in one party. So the role was tailor made for you, actually. Not in really, a sense. No, or? really. When I ha when I returned after studies from the state. I was uh, invited to come back to the party and then after some discussions I decided, okay, I will do some work because it was a era soon after the youth were rebellion had taken place and economic issues were coming up, world issues, we had just returned from states, mm -hmm. Vietnam War protests, we, we participated, all that. So that background, I think, gave me uh, the final push to make push the decision to, to join the people. And with your father's passing away in 1972 is when we actually came over and, and moved and, and took over the MEP and had it basically. Yeah, one, one year later, I couldn't come for his funeral, one year later. And thereafter, I've been in, in the game for almost Not tired of it. <laughs> not tired of it. Not tired, but uh, thinking what the future is going to be. And nothing is static. Mm -hmm. And it is for the new generation, I feel, to think. And if we can contribute to their thinking, uh, to create a better life, better society. This is our whole objective. We got dogmatic theories are failing in the world, whether in the Western, Eastern, all the scenario. Um, so one has to be pragmatic, one has to be creative and one has to, in politics, one also has to deliver. People are not going to just listen if you don't deliver. Deliver the goods. Right. Talking of delivering the goods, you've held, you, you've held, you've held many portfolios. Uh, which one was or is closest to your heart? Difficult transport, to say. Transport, environment, higher education, water yeah. supply. First I was Minister of Transport, that was my first portfolio, a challenge, and very short period. Then for about three months I also had the portfolio in addition of environment. I got the chance of meeting a lot of people, 
discussing issues of the world, perhaps which I had uh, ex experienced in America, uh, coming slowly to our regions. Uh, I had the um, honor of chairing the ozone summit in Sri Lanka, um, getting difficulty getting a resolution through to Sri Lanka. Soon after, I'm, we lost, government lost, we went in opposition. For a short period. Uh, yeah, about two years. Yeah. Came back. Then the portfolio of urban development, uh, water. Uh, I enjoyed that because it, it was a very wide portfolio, not only uh, about cities, but in rural, about rural areas, about sacred cities, you know, having dialogue with various religious dignitaries and then related to water, very important issue. Certainly. Drinking water, especially. Safe drinking water. Safe drinking water. Uh, perhaps uh, that was another issue. And then I was also deputy, Mrs. Bandaranayaka, Chandrika Kumarathunga, uh, also added on the portfolio of deputy education, higher education. You know, really an experience that I never forget. In Why? meeting all the academics uh, of different, from different universities, pushing for new Reform. reforms, some which had taken a fairly long time, which are today coming through, um, as pushing for to establish a new UA university. So all that was experience but to work with seniors in the academic field, professors and all, listening to them, uh, what education should be and making my own little contribution. contribution. And having certain principles which I did not want to compromise, having okay. therefore debates with them. So you do feel a sense of gratification looking back on, on these portfolios you've held? Uh, very much. And thereafter I have moved uh, to urban development and uh, sacred area. In mean, the first time President Rajapaksa established a ministry for sacred mm. area. Uh, quite a lot of work we were able to um, initiate. Planning was involved, very sensitive issues, working with, though they were not with me, ar archaeological department, de various departments, though we were having a little bit of control, declaring sacred areas, um, religious wise, you know serving with all the religions while declaration of these sacred areas. Uh, just managed to escape getting into a controversy over um, the island between India and Sri Lanka. Yeah, yes, I remember that, yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, that I thought was a good opening. I also thought better bowl once and see how the rex, yes, 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 takes the ball. So, right, we go into our first break and back on the show very soon with our guest.